Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to demonstrate just how easy it is to make your own applique letters. Let's get started. Here is the product that I'm using to put the letters on your fabric and it's called Pellon Light Easy Steam 2 and it's paper that's got some glue on it and the glue's wedged in between two sheets of paper. And on the back it has really simple instructions for putting it on. How I started mine was that I went to my word processor on my computer or your laptop, any device that you're using that has a word processing software application. I went in and selected a letter style and selected the largest size I could get. And this is what it is. It's a one inch letter. But for some of the things I have, I want my letters much larger. So I went into a photocopier printer and enlarged it. And look how big you can eventually get it. In fact, you can even get it bigger than this. Here is another style of lettering that was in my word processor. And for this demonstration, this is the one I chose. But no matter what style you pick, the process is the same for all letter styles. Many of your letters, and probably most of your letters, you will be placing them down on your fabric in reverse. So here is the regular way you would look at the number one. But when I start the process of making my fabric letter, I'm actually going to work in reverse so that it comes out in the correct way. And as we go along, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So here is my fusible webbing. On the back is just plain paper. On the front is this blue grid line paper. So you can use that to help draw your letters if you want to draw your own. So here it is the front side. I'm going to turn my letter over and place it facing down. And then you could, to hold it in place, you could get a little tiny piece of Scotch tape and just maybe put it in a corner to hold it down because while you are drawing around it, you don't want it to move. So once you stabilize it, then go ahead and trace around it. Here's one that I've already done. So after you've traced around it, then go out about a quarter of an inch and cut around it. So after you've cut it out. This is what it would look like. Now take your fabric, and this is my pretty side, the front of the fabric. So I'm going to turn it over to the back side. That's where you want to put this. Then you want to turn your uh, little applique letter or number over to the back, and you're going to remove the plain paper off the back. Make sure the glue doesn't come up. If the glue starts coming up, then take a straight pin and just tear the paper a little bit and try to push that glue back down on the other piece of paper. So then pull it up like that, then turn the glue side down, put it on the back and finger press it down. And then with your scissors, you're going to go ahead and cut right on your drawn lines. Here's what my letter looks like after I've cut it out. Now I'm going to turn it over to the back and remove the other piece of paper off of the back. Then once you've got it removed, here's the front of my fabric. You're going to take it and place it down and finger press it. So even though we started out with the letter in reverse, it now is facing the correct direction. Now you're ready to select an applique stitch. So here are some samples of some of my applique stitches. You may have some of these or you may not have any. This is a zigzag stitch and most of your sewing machines have the zigzag stitch. So this is what it would look like normally. But if you're going to do applique stitching, then I would shorten the length so the stitches are a little closer together. You can, if you want, widen it, 
but for most of your letters and numbers, you're going to want to keep it fairly normal. Before you begin stitching, you need to place either sewing machine stabilizer underneath, which you can get at Joann Fabrics and Crafts. I often use thin paper like this, and you can get it on rolls in a hardware store such as Home Depot or Lowe's. And it comes on small rolls like this, and you can also get it on great big rolls. But make sure you pick thin paper. You will also need to use an open toe presser foot. Place your open toe presser foot right on the edge of your applique fabric and keep it there the entire time you're stitching. When you get down to a corner, make sure you leave your needle down through your fabric, lift up your presser foot, turn your fabric, and continue stitching. I really recommend that you practice on scrap fabric first. Practice going around corners and around curves. It'll really help you to understand where your needle is going while you are stitching. So here is a sample of what I've done. Now I chose a really narrow satin stitch to go around this. So I'm going to take my presser foot so you can see if I keep it right on the center, you'll be able to hit the fabric. So you want to hit your applique fabric as well as your background fabric. When you're done, it's real easy to just tear the paper off of the back side. Well, I hope you learned something new today in this tutorial, and I hope you try doing this. Remember, practice. You will get better and better. Now, if you're interested in doing other applique projects, scroll down to the description section. So as you're scrolling down, look for the word more, click on it, the description section will expand open and you will see other links appearing. Now make sure you follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.